Pastor Matt Truella is promoting abolish human abortion. And Pastor Matt Truella is promoting T. Russell Hunter, the founder of Abolish Human Abortion. And that organization, according to their website, abolishhumanabortion.org, is taking the position, which is essentially a Tory position, they are taking the position very clearly in black and white that an individual does not, an individual does not have the right to defend himself or to defend other innocent people when the government does not authorize that individual to defend with force himself or other people. That a lesser magistrate is necessary. Yes, I am supporting the interposition of the lesser magistrate, but to take the position that you lose the right to self-defense that our founding fathers agreed and said was unalienable. To take the position that that right can be alienated, okay? That, that, that when you don't have a quorum or, or whatever, I, T. Russell Hunter doesn't uh, give numbers, but whatever he defines as a government, uh, whether it's a, a city council, I don't know, he doesn't say, but he takes the position very clearly, and he uses the word government, that you lose the right to use force to defend innocent human life your own life or anyone else's life when you don't have authorization from a government. That that right is gone, okay? He clearly takes that position. I've quoted it, and the problem is that Matt Truella is promoting this organization, promoting the man who wrote those words, and there's no caveat. Matt is, has now for years not addressing that question. And I tried to support abolish human abortion before I was aware of this fact that essentially they take a Tory position, a position that nullifies the tradition that we inherited uh, from uh, the Reformation, from John Knox, okay, and from our founding fathers, that, that human rights, even on an individual level, even when you don't have a parliament or a state, yes, I want to interpose the states, yes, the states should nullify, my God, I've been praying for this, begging for this, I'm glad you guys are doing it, if you're really doing it. I'm glad, Texas, I'm glad these bills are there. I want to support you. But at the cost of, of, of walking back that principle upon which our nation is founded, <laughs> no. Way. No. Way. You got it? No. Wait, if the cost of abolition is that we're going to, to walk uh, history back to the point where we no longer defend the rights of individuals to defend themselves, and this is insane. I know Matt Truella uh, doesn't have that position. He's been taking the opposite position for many years, m m very publicly. <laughs> But the fact remains that he's promoting the person who's taking that position. When I posted on Matt Truella's uh, a comment about him going down there to Texas, uh, a comment that said the preborn deserve the same defense as the born, and and it also said um, we're going to have to, um, you know, it was just some technicalities. We're going to have to, uh, uh, you know, domicile in the state where we do the interposition, where we do the nullification, where we do the ab abolition, so we can vote there. I know it wasn't deleted because of that. My point was we would have to register to vote in those states. So it was a brief comment, and the substance of the comment was that I, and I began the comment by saying, the pre-born deserve the same defense as the born. Immediately, within seconds, Pastor Matt deleted it, deleted it. And the only reason I have challenged T. Russell Hunter directly in my uh, uh, parody uh, which contains a lot of serious information, but my parody um, at nullifyroe.com. The only reason I have, uh, and the only basis on which I have challenged T. Russell Hunter in that parody is because he has defined abolitionism in pacifist terms, <laughs> in terms of the individual's right to self-defense. If we do that, first of all, that's not abolitionism. 
that's not abolitionism. This is the reason, you know, why uh, William Lord, uh, Lloyd Garrison actually uh, clashed with Frederick Douglass because Frederick Douglass realized that, that even the slavery abolitionism w was not going to be resolved um, through uh, pacifism. Now, we can argue about that all day long. As I say in my article, there are analogies, there are parallels, but slavery is in fact something different than genocide. The black slaves were not being uh, killed through genocide. Uh, you know, some of them died uh, uh, unjustly, but, that, but it was not a genocide, okay? It was not the way legalized abortion is. It was not a genocide. It was not legal to kill those people willy-nilly the way it is now for these babies. So the bottom line is that uh, that is not historic abolitionism, and it is a position, a Tory position, that utterly undermines the entire basis of the United States of America and of our Western tradition of government encompassing thousands of years uh, from before Magna Carta, uh, in the scholarship for which Matt Truella has become known. And so the confusion comes in when publicly AHA is taking the position that that, that, is, uh, that they're Tories, that the individuals don't have the right to self-defense or the defense of other innocent people, and Matt is promoting them. Okay, That is enormous confusion. Uh, and look, I work with many people. I've worked with Matt Trello. I love them. I pray for them. I've supported them. Okay, I work here. I'm in Kenya right now. I work with Muslims. I don't have to agree with people theologically, but the reason I'm attacking Matt Truella now for his, some of his theological, specifically three of his theological positions, is because first of all, I suspect in my heart that some of them, they're so errant, I suspect that they're related to what he's doing now. This apparent, apparent duplicity that he is uh, manifesting now in this, in this confusion that I'm talking about. And I'm not the only one who sees this confusion. There are many others. I've been winking at it, probably wrongfully, but I can't take it anymore. It's a big burden and I've got to let it go. I've got to talk to him about it. And this is me. I'm in Africa. This is me, Pastor Matt, if you're watching, talking to you about it. I don't take your word for it. I don't take Jason Storms, your son and co-pastor's word for it, that you're influencing them more than they're influencing you. You need, you must clarify because they have taken a public position that utterly undermines our Western tradition of government and the right, the inalienable right to life of human beings is, is it, that is a meaningless idea when you don't have the right as an individual to defend that right, okay? It's a joke. It's worse than a joke. It's satanic. It's evil. T. Russell Hunter says it is, and I quote, an evil. It is evil, he says, evil to use force to defend innocent persons, okay? That is why I'm because you have not clarified this, because you, you're down there in, in Texas saying these are the best people in the world. You're telling me the best people in the world, the best people in this country. That's what you said on your posts. These are the best people. <laughs> and the best people have taken the Tory position and are going to accomplish abolition on the basis of, of, of that individuals do not have the right to defend themselves without a government? Seriously? And, and furthermore, T. Russell Hunter says that that is unscriptural? Really? 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 So that's why I'm attacking your theological positions. I think it's related. Okay? I've kept quiet about them because it was more important to me, like it is with my, my Muslim friends that are co-belligerent belligerent with me, uh, it's more important to me to, to accomplish the mutual objectives that we share than it is for me to, to, to bicker with them. And it's easier with Muslims, frankly, because no one thinks that I'm a Muslim and no one thinks that they're Christian. Okay? The trouble with you is you're not even part of a denomination. Uh, you've got this independent church, and that's good, fine. Uh, but you're not nailed down to a theological position, and the theological positions that you've taken are, are outside the Christian tradition, squarely outside, because you say that God is uh, unaware of or doesn't know, as you said in my house, in an absolute sense, um, that the future. Okay, that's what you say. No one will tell me you didn't. I can put my hand on, uh, there's my Bible, I can put my hand on my Bible. I heard you say it. So if you changed, I, great. I'd like to know that you changed. You're hanging around with the Missouri Synod. You're hanging around with many uh, Orthodox, with a little O, Christians. 
So, uh, you know, maybe they know what you believe, maybe they don't, but I love the gospel. I love the truth of God's word. I love the doctrine Paul delivered to us, including Romans 7, which you want to strip me of. <laughs> the one passage that actually gives me comfort when I realize that day after day after day after day after day, I do not do <laughs> the things I wish I did. You say that's reminiscing. <laughs> you say that's not the con uh, condition of a regenerate Christian. That that's just Paul reminiscing about the past. Well, in fact, I wish I could or would defend the preborn children. I think it's a sin of omission. I'm sure. I know. It's a sin of omission every day when we don't defend them and we're not in prison for it, okay? I know that. You know that. T. Russell Hunter knows that, okay? Let's quit. pussyfooting around. We know what's going on. We've failed. We've failed. Woe is me, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And yet you, at Sermon Audio, uh, spend an entire sermon denying that those words in Romans 7 are... Um, are from uh, our Paul talking about our present condition. Well, I know, okay, that that's my present condition. And with reference to legalized abortion, I know, even though you've done so much more than me, so many laudable things, and you're doing good things now, but I know it's your condition too. Because those children need a defense, and we are not in jail, and we are not in prison right now for trying to defend them. And they deserve a defense. We have failed them. It is sin. And so the very scripture that gives me my bedrock for how I survive day after day after day after day, you try, have tried with all your little, uh, what passes for exegetical uh, might, to, uh, to destroy that, that word from, that the Holy Spirit spoke through St. Paul. I know you're not the only one who takes that position. Furthermore, as I noted in my article, you, you construct a straw man for the opposite position. If anyone wants to see... The two sides of the argument, and there's two sides, and there's two arguments for Romans 7. Okay, go ahead, listen to Pastor Matt's sermon, but then go read not what Matthew Truella has to say, <laughs> but what Matthew Henry has to say, because Matthew Henry, I don't always agree with him, but in Romans 7, Matthew Henry very, very carefully uh, doesn't construct a straw man on either side and gives both interpretations and in both sides, and I think reaches uh, the very uh, reasonable conclusion, the conclusion that I've reached about it. But nonetheless, he gives Matt's side and he gives my side. My point is that I'm done with it. I'm done with it, Matt. If you're going to, uh, to, to, to chum around and not clarify uh, what's going on here with, with people who are literally uh, undermining the entire basis for our uh, American Revolution, the entire basis for everything that John Knox said and did and everything that you're writing about, that's duplicity. It means that you're saying one thing with other people and, and, and then you're saying something else with these other people because I, I tried to, suppo uh, to support AHA and they kicked me out. And it was very clearly, now there's other things that they have a problem with me since, since then, but it wasn't, initially it wasn't personal uh, issues or, or matters of taste, it was very clearly T. Russell Hunter and everyone who was supporting him on social media, um, they slandered me, first of all, but the, but the substantial reason that, that, that I was told not to use their symbol the way you use their symbol day after day after day after day and promote them day after day as I was trying to do is because I don't agree with what they're saying. So, so why is it that I'm out and you're in? Is that not a fair question? Are, are you above questioning? So, so, so you've got a right uh, to stand above questioning. Not only do you have the right to, to try to nullify Romans 7 <laughs> for Christians who might be struggling with sin and need to hear it, okay? Not only do you have the right to, to blaspheme God that he, he doesn't know the future in an absolute sense, an, abs an asinine theological position that places you outside of historic Christianity. If, if God isn't omniscient, oh, I know you'll say he's omniscient, but if God isn't truly omniscient, if, if the future is not present to him, 
if the past is not present to him, if he's not there now with Moses in the burning bush, if he's not there now as not only as the Alpha, but as the Omega with us, seated in heavens, if that is not real to him, then we are not talking about the God that Paul knew. We are not talking about the God of the Bible. And even if we disagree on that, you, you say it's the God of the Bible, I say it's not, I'm telling you right now, it is not the God that I worship. I renounce any God that does not know the future in an absolute sense. I, I spit on that God, okay? I reject that God. Muslims know more about God than someone who says that God does not know the future in an absolute sense. I know Jason Storms has said, I saw it in black and white, that you're not a moral government theology uh, advocate like Adrian Horian, your in-law, okay? So I'm not saying you're MGT. I know that you're not open theist. I don't know which parts of open theism you advocate and don't. Uh, exhaustively, I don't know that. But I know the core of both of those the core of both of those is that God does not know the future in an absolute sense. All the other doctrines of open theism and MGT basically flow from their model of God. Okay, uh, You could say they flow from the model of the human will, and the model of God is, is, is tweaked and, and reformed uh, to fit their model of the human will, which is actually central. That's what I think. But nonetheless, once you tweak the model of God all these other conclusions flow. So it, it doesn't matter to me that you're not MGT, that you're not open theist. It doesn't matter. Okay, they are, they are so far beyond Christianity. They're the God of moral government, the God of open theism, and the God, never mind those categories, the God who doesn't know the future in an absolute sense is not the Abrahamic God. Period. Is not. And if you say you disagree with me on that, fine. We disagree. At least now it's open. At least now... People don't think, just like when I work with my Muslim friends, Suleiman Ahmed is one of them. Love the guy. Okay, I don't love him in the Lord because we're not in the Lord together. But I share more in common with him or with an Orthodox Jew than I do with you. And that needs to be on record so that people don't think that the Christianity, what I'm calling Christianity, is what you're calling Christianity. Okay, that's important to me. And uh, I'm willing to work with you as a co-belligerent as long as we clarify this, but, but even that is meaningless, and I'm not willing to work with you as a co-belligerent if you don't clarify what's going on here with Abolish Human Abortion and T. Russell Hunter, that little punk who thinks that he can uh, wave a magic wand and take away individuals' right to, to defend themselves even when they don't have a government.